Welcome to Better View. In this video, I am going to talk about avian respiratory system. Avian respiratory system starts with the nostril, also called the external nares, and then it communicates with the nasal cavity, which in turn communicates with the oropharynx via a median slit on the roof of oropharynx called coana. Okay, then the oropharynx via glottis will communicate with trachea, which will lead to primary secondary and tertiary bronchi okay so these are the main structures of the avian respiratory system and they will form the pathway of air okay then the tertiary bronchi in the lungs will form the area of gas exchange so as i've said it starts from the nares external nares on the beak so we have the beak here then we have glottis that is the entrance to the trachea so we have trachea then at the tracheal bifurcation we have a swelling called syrinx that is voice box in case of birds so instead of larynx birds have syrinx okay larynx is absent in avian species then this is uh, trachea then syrinx then we have the bronchi the bronchi uh, the primary bronchi to be more specific has two parts extra pulmonary that is outside the lungs and intrapulmonary part that is inside the lungs this intrapulmonary part will then form four secondary bronchi okay these four secondary bronchi will then further divide into tertiary or para bronchi and the para bronchi are supplied with air capillaries that are responsible for the gaseous exchange so this one is the big uh, primary bronchi then we have the secondary bronchi and many small tertiary bronchi okay and the tertiary bronchi are supplied with air capillaries for gaseous exchange so this is the pathway of air nostril to nasal cavity to coana to oropharynx to trachea to primary bronchi secondary bronchi para bronchus okay and the birds have a very unique structure called air sacs okay air sacs act as bellows to the lungs and they provide air circulation within the lungs okay so in mammals we have diaphragm to do that right diaphragm will contract and relax so inspiration and expiration can occur but in case of birds the lungs are rigid structures they don't compress or expand so the function of that bellowing is done by air sac okay air sacs are nine in number so we have the cervical air sac this is paired okay this is the cervical air sac then we have the interclavicular air sac or sometimes just called clavicular air sac it is unpaired okay so this middle one very large okay it goes like this that is clavicular air sac then we have the cranial thoracic air sac again two in number okay one here one here then we have the caudal thoracic air sac okay i have just made a mistake in the writing it is not caudal air sac it is caudal thoracic air sac okay again it is paired then we have the abdominal air sac here okay so these are the air sacs and they act as bellows to the lungs okay so here are some points uh, to remember about the various structures of the respiratory system the first being primary bronchi and as i have said it has two parts extra pulmonary outside the lungs intra pulmonary inside the lungs then we have secondary bronchi it has four groups based on location we have medial dorsal medial ventral lateral ventral and lateral dorsal okay in each lung these four groups of secondary bronchi is there then para bronchi uh, are of two types we have paleo pulmonic called the ancient lungs and neo pulmonic called the new lungs okay the paleo pulmonic run parallel they have unidirectional air flow and they are present in all the birds while the neo pulmonic are present in some birds like fowl duck and emus and in them they are present in the caudo lateral portion of the lungs and they are uh, have a bidirectional air flow okay so neo pulmonic are kind of like mammalian because they have bidirectional that is the only similarity i will say but paleo pulmonic are unidirectional okay they are ancient lungs neo pulmonic neo means new new lungs paleo old ancient lungs okay then lungs they are small rigid don't provide ventilation uh, covered that air sacs there are nine in total 
so interclavicular or just clavicular is single the rest are paired the asx are grouped into two categories anterior or cranial and posterior or caudal so clavicular cervical and cranial thoracic are anterior asx while caudal thoracic and abdominal are called posterior asx okay the role of the asx is to decrease the weight of the body and they act as storage of gases okay they are avascular structures so they are devoid of blood vessels and act as bellows to the lungs i think i've repeated this point quite a number okay then mechanism of breathing okay up to this point we have just talked about the various structures and the flow of air outside the lungs now what will happen inside the lungs that is the mechanism of breathing okay so unlike mammals the breathing pattern in birds have two cycle okay it is made up of two cycles of inspiration and expiration so one inspiration and expiration forms one cycle that is also present in mammals but in birds there's a second inspiration and a second expiration that is the second cycle okay and these two cycles will form the breathing pattern in birds so the first cycle has inspiration and expiration so we have the first inspiration and first expiration in the first inspiration as the name suggest the air will come inside it is inspiration and it will enter in the air sac okay for example i have written caudal air sac it will get filled with air and it will expand okay now in the next stage or the next step that is the first expiration the air will be expired out from the air sac okay i'm not saying that the air is expired out of the respiratory system as a whole i'm just saying that air is expired from the air sac okay so the caudal air sac will expel the air out and so what will happen this air will move like this okay so this is the secondary bronchi and these all are tertiary bronchi where the gaseous exchange will occur okay and this is the cranial air sac towards which the air is moving then in the second cycle again it is inspiration so of course the animal has not stopped breathing in the second cycle so air is going to come and enter into the caudal air sac and the caudal air sac is going to expand just like the first step but in the third step what is happening the cranial air sac is getting filled with air okay it is getting filled with air so it will also expand then in the fourth and last step the cranial air sac will expel the air out and the final expiration will occur so this is second expiration and this is second inspiration okay and this is the mechanism of breathing so instead of just one cycle as in mammals the birds have two cycles so first the air will enter into the lungs and then into the air sacs then the air air will be removed from the air sacs okay then this air will enter into the air sac another air sac that is placed cranially so the first uh, in the first uh, inspiration sorry the air will enter into the caudal air sacs what are the caudal air sacs caudal thoracic and abdominal and in the second inspiration the air will enter into the cranial air sacs that are clavicular cervical and cranial thoracic okay see here anterior and posterior or cranial or caudal so in the first inspiration these three are involved and in the second inspiration sorry i just twisted it in the first the caudal ones are involved and in the second the anterior ones are involved okay so this is the mechanism of breathing just a quick revision first step first inspiration air will enter into the caudal air sacs second step first expiration air will be expelled out of the caudal air sacs second uh, cycle that is the third step third step is second inspiration so air will enter into the lungs but it will also enter into the cranial air sacs then the fourth step that is the second expiration air will be expelled out of the cranial air sacs okay and this is second cycle complete now let us talk about the gaseous exchange gas exchange efficiency of avian lung is very high as compared to the mammalian counterpart why it is because of two things it is very important unidirectional flow of air and cross current mechanism 
okay so what is the meaning of this thing so see here in the parabronchi the air will move only in one direction while in case of alveoli in mammals the air is flowing in two directional okay one is coming inside the other is going outside okay so in mammals we have bidirectional flow in avian species in paleopulmonic parabronchi there is unidirectional flow of air in the parabronchial lumen okay so the parabronchial gas continuously changes as it flows along the length of the parabronchus the presence of air capillaries greatly increases the gaseous capacity of parabronchi okay so just like alveoli increase the surface area for the gaseous exchange in lungs of mammals air capillaries are there to increase the gaseous exchange rate or the gaseous exchange capacity of the parabronchi in avian species then what is cross current mechanism it means that this is our parabronchi and the blood vessels are like this okay they are at an right angle to the parabronchi and what it will do it will provide fresh deoxygenated blood for gaseous exchange okay so in cross current blood flow blood capillaries are at a right angle to the parabronchi therefore always fresh completely deoxygenated blood comes for gaseous exchange so with high carbon dioxide in blood and high oxygen in parabronchi the gaseous exchange is increased okay so suppose this is a parabronchi and let us say this is a blood capillary and they are moving in the same direction okay so air is moving like this blood is moving like this of course there is gaseous exchange between them but let us say first it has very great amount of oxygen then it has very great great amount of carbon dioxide but as they move forward the amount of oxygen will decrease the amount of carbon dioxide will decrease so the gaseous exchange will also decrease but in case of avian species because they want to uh, increase their capacity of respiration what they do they make the blood capillaries perpendicular to the air capillaries what will uh, occur due to this the oxygen definitely it is only moving in this direction so it is decreasing but the blood always has high carbon dioxide level okay and due to the difference in this uh, level of the two gases gaseous exchange is increased so they have greater capacity for gaseous exchange and this is all about the cross current mechanism and unidirectional flow then at last we'll talk about the regulation of respiration it is not too much different from that uh, of mammals but there are few things that i like to discuss the first thing is chemoreceptors and we have two groups of chemoreceptors first one is central and the second one is peripheral central chemoreceptors respond to a change in partial pressure of carbon dioxide and hydronium ion okay it is pco2 okay pco2 and h plus concentration while the peripheral chemoreceptors they again uh, have two part uh, components or we can say uh, we can say two groups extra pulmonary and intra pulmonary extra pulmonary are present in carotid and aortic bodies and as po2 decreases partial pressure of oxygen decreases they will increase the discharge rate which will lead to the increase in ventilation okay thus oxygen level will be restored in case of intra pulmonary they are present in lungs as the name suggests and they are very sensitive to carbon dioxide okay extra pulmonary peripheral chemoreceptors are sensitive to oxygen while intra pulmonary uh, peripheral chemoreceptors are sensitive to carbon dioxide but not oxygen okay then the second one is mechanoreceptors they are present in the walls of air sacs and they are sensitive to inflation okay so if we have greater ventilation if we have greater uh, rate of inspiration then the air sacs will expand more and more and due to this the mechanoreceptors will be stimulated okay then the third one is baroreceptors they are present in carotid and aortic bodies and they are sensitive to pressure changes okay if there is decreased in blood pressure they will cause hyperventilation if there is increase in blood pressure they will cause hypoventilation the last one are thermoreceptors they are located centrally and periphery and they are responsible for shivering and panting shivering occurs when temperature drops 
so the body will shiver it will vibrate and this will create heat so temperature will become normal panting occurs when the temperature rises okay so you might have seen panting in dogs uh, the birds have similar mechanism okay so panting will occur when temperature rises and it will cool the body and will decrease the temperature okay so this is it for the avian respiratory system what we have discussed first we discussed about the various parts of respiratory system we talked about the pathway of air the main uh, differences in the structure to that of mammals then we talked about a little bit on the topic of mechanism of breathing after mechanism of breathing we talked about gaseous exchange and regulation the important things that you have to uh, remember in this topic is structure first what is the difference in the structure the first thing that you are going to notice is the presence of parabronchi it is something that is unique to birds the second thing being air sacs okay their number their structure their location then the mechanism of breathing unlike mammals the birds have two cycles in breathing okay first cycle and second cycle each one cycle has one inspiration and one expiration so in total they have two inspiration and two expiration then gaseous exchange they have great ex uh, gaseous exchange capacity why due to two things first unidirectional flow of air and second cross current mechanism okay then regulation of respiration occurs by various receptors chemoreceptors mechanoreceptors baroreceptors and thermoreceptors so this is it if you like this video found it useful then hit the like button share this video with your friends and if you haven't then subscribe to my channel thank you